City Kickboxing seems to have things figured out to the highest of levels. Now, there's very few gyms that you can train mixed martial arts at a high level. If you were to go back when I started, I was a member of Team Quest. And there used to be an official ranking that came out by a well-respected publication that would not only rank the fighters and the champions and the, the order of the contenders, in their opinion, they would also rank the gyms. And they would do the gyms one time a year. But Team Quest won the award for the number one gym in the world to train mixed martial arts three times. In the span that I kept track, which I believe to be, I'll just throw a number out of 10 years, but I'm, I'm real close, eight, nine, 10 years. Team Quest was never less than three. We always finished first, second, or third in this ranking. And as proud as we were of that, we also knew the secret, which is there's not very many gyms out there. I mean, just to use North America alone, you had Team Quest, you had AMC, you had Militich. This is prior to American Top Team opening up. This is pr prior to Black Zillions even being a word let alone Glenn Robinson and company going and getting that started. Gracie Baja started to make a big splash. They were doing jujitsu. Then they started to carry over a, a little bit more and more to mixed martial arts. The point is now you could open your door, throw a stone and find a mixed martial arts gym. But at a different time, it was really hard to do. Some of the great gyms right now, it's not just about the athletes that you have. It also has to do with understanding the business, which largely in the world of a promotion business is a marketing business. How are you going to market yourself? Let me give you an example. Conan Silviera, the head coach of American Top Team in Florida, when he started bringing athletes over, he was largely bringing over Brazilian athletes that understood jiu-jitsu, and this was his philosophy as a great base, and then come to the training center in Coconut Creek and we're going to teach you the rest so that you're ready to go into the ring, pursue a mixed martial arts career. But Conan also understood if you're going to do business in North America with Bellator or the UFC, you have to be able to speak to the audience, which means you have to be able to speak English. So Conan required his athletes, not only were they required to show up Monday through uh, Friday, not only were they required three jujitsu classes a week and one wrestling class a week and two sparring sessions a week and a mitt session over, you were required, you must attend two tutor sessions of English. Now, American top team, excuse me, Dan Lambert, they would pay for this. They would bring in the tutors. I mean, they'd sit these guys down just like a classroom, put a space aside, have a chalkboard, have the tutor come in have a lesson plan, have papers and pens in front of you, but they required that you learn to speak English. I offer that for you because now you see how far the American top team has come, but it's not just the ins and outs of the punches and kicks. There was also another deeper level of understanding that was not only foreshadowed, but follow through upon. Now, let me take that story and tell you why I bring it up as I juxtapose city kickboxing. Yes, they have the top athletes. Yes, they have Israel Adesanya. Yes, they've got Volkanovski. Yes, they've got Dan Hooker. Okay, they have the athletes, but something is going on over there. I trust it is from their coach. I trust. I don't know this. Maybe the boys just all get together. But these guys, between Volkanovski, between Adesanya, between Dan Hooker, understand the chess being played in this sport at a level that no other team collectively understands. You will find guys. You'll find a Conor McGregor here and a Colby Covington over there and a George Masvidal every now and again. You're, you'll find some guys that get it. But as a team, to see each one of these guys, each time they open their mouth, each time they go into a public setting and embrace the media or the fans or any kind of a decision maker to see the chess that they're playing collectively leads me to conclude that somebody 
much like Coach Conan did at at t Somebody has grabbed them and sat them down and put them through some classes. Those classes were probably as simple as, hey guys, don't forget to do this. Consider doing that. Observe this athlete who did this. Observe that athlete who did that. Look where it got them. It could be as simple as that. But here is what Dan Hooker, Dan Hooker, who has done everything right, by the way, for 16 months. Dan Hooker has not done everything right for five years. Dan Hooker fought his ass off from day one. Dan Hooker's skills got better from day one. Dan Hooker has not done everything right from day one. For the last 16 months, Dan Hooker has not missed. Not missed. Dan Hooker is about to fight Paul Felder. Do you guys remember how that came about? Quick lesson. Dan Hooker, very politely, wins his fight against Ally Aquina. Means he gets an interview, co-main event spot. Paul Felder happens to be in the weight class, happens to be ranked in the top five, happens to be the one working that night in the ring, wearing a suit, holding the microphone, and asks Hooker what is next. Hooker, very politely, said, I would like a top, I would like a top five opponent. And by the way, I happen to be looking at one right now. What are you going to do? I mean, what in the hell are you going to do except make the fight? What in the hell is Paul Felder going to do except to agree to the fight? But you see what he did. That same night, the very next fight, his teammate Adesanya fights. Adesanya wins. Instead of celebrating that championship, instead of whew, feeling the relief that Whitaker is behind him, he understands that the second one fight ends, the marketing for the next fight begins. He points into the crowd and he calls out Paul Acosta. Before he leaves the building that night, he has his next paycheck ready. And all of you, doesn't matter if you're a fighter, doesn't matter if you're an athlete of any kind. What's the most important thing in your job? What's the most important thing? Is it to do a good job? Is it that you got the job? Or is it to make sure you have a job tomorrow? What is the most important thing? It's to make sure you have a job tomorrow. Whatever you have to do, however good of a job you had to do, I mean, I understand there's pieces to go to. What's the most important thing? If you could only choose one, to have a job tomorrow. So these guys lined up their next job before they ever even walked out of the cage, and they happen to be teammates. I've seen Volkanovsky in large part, not quite as well, but still he gets a B plus, A minus for his work, do the same thing. Hooker now has pulled another trick out of his hat, which is he's getting ready to go into a main event fight with Paul Felder, fight that he called for. He's steering his own career. As he's getting ready to go into that fight, he's given a media opportunity. Why talk about Paul Felder and call out Paul Felder when you already have Paul Felder? Why would you do that? It's what everybody else would do. It's why you got called there. It's what's topical, what's coming up. But why would you do it? You've already got it. Why would you ask for something you've already got? Why would you sell something that's already sold? Fair questions by me. Hooker didn't do those things. Hooker used those media opportunities to then get himself another job against Justin Gaethje. By the way, thank you very much, Dan Hooker. Who, who amongst us doesn't want to see Hooker Take on Gaethje. You could flip the script. Felder gets over on Hooker. Great. Felder versus Gaethje. But Hooker does appear to be cut from a little bit of a different cloth. His fight with Barboza was, was nothing short of amazing. It, it was nothing short of, of the essence of grit and heart and toughness. Nothing. Absolutely nothing short. Skyrocketed. His stock skyrocketed. By the way, he got the silver medal that night. His stock skyrocketed. He goes into a tough guy contest with Al Iaquina. It's very hard to out-tough Al Iaquina. Hooker comes away with a gold medal. Steers his own ship, gets what he wants, show that he has an understanding in the industry, which then shows he has power in the industry. points to where he's going to put the ball, just like Babe Ruth did, and then put the ball there, and is going to be in a cage with Paul Felder. And as terrible of a proposition as that sounds like to most of us, it's the one that he wanted. And he has now dangled Justin Gaethje. 
Nobody calls out Justin Gaethje. You fight Justin Gaethje when you have to fight Justin Gaethje. Nobody wants to fight Justin Gaethje. You pretend you want to fight Justin Gaethje. The phone rings, you grab your balls, and you say yes, because that's the business you're in, and that's the life that you've chosen. But deep in your heart, you don't want that fight, unless you're Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker is cut from a different cloth. He's got a big problem in front of him called Paul Felder. He got a big problem in front of him. But if he gets past that problem, he is going to line a fight up with Justin Gaethje. Mark my words. He has already began to line a fight up with Justin Gaethje. If Hooker gets by Felder, Hooker will leave the arena that night with the most important thing in business, which is to assure that tomorrow you're still in business.